real quick scenario on this thing. I got a call from Matt like during the week going, you know, his partner wasn't going to be able to make the tournament. He says, you want to come fish the tournament? I wasn't doing nothing that week. That Saturday, I had a guide trip on Friday. I said, I'd love to do it. I mean, be able to have a chance to fish with Matt was awesome. And uh, I said, yeah. He says, well, it's your kind of bite. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, we, we knew it was spring. So he was referring to the sight bite. Anyway, we knew it was a sight fishing bite. The fish are on beds. Um, that's my weakness. I, I'm, I'm just not good at it. And a lot of these tournaments that are, are one bed fishing, I, I, you know, I struggle in. So I knew it was a sight bite, so I called Johnny. Johnny is one of the best sight fishermen in, in, in the state for sure. So I called him up and asked him if he wanted to fish, and he said, why not? Let's go do it. So anyways, I'm like, well, let's do it, but I can't practice. You know, I said, uh, I've got a guide trip on Friday, so I'll just have to be there for the tournament. And he said, no problem. He'll go out and, and as Matt Shura does, goes out and, and practices because you can't win these things without practice. You just can't do it. I went up Thursday and Friday to practice, try to locate some fish. And my main goal was to try to find something, you know, as an alternate pattern, you know, with the sight fishing. Sometimes, you know, whatever with the moon phases, the wind, the clouds, the storms, that kind of thing, you know, everything's got to be right. So here we are, we start the tournament out, and Matt takes us right to a spot where he, he was doing pretty good. So our plan was not to get up and get into the shallows and actually start sight fishing until the sun was up where we could see. And that was my thoughts, is start the tournament there, put a few fish in the boat, hopefully catch a limit, and, you know, at least get five fish in the boat that way we can relax slow down and you know catch catch bed fish let Johnny do his thing up front find the bigger fish and, and spend some time on it got him he doesn't feel very big yet he's running to the boat oh now he's a little bit bigger <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, you got him, brother. <laughs> well, that was our first start. one anyway. Good start. Little Seco bass. Boy, he ate it. Look at that. That is a good sign right there. That's a real good sign. All right, get him back up. I'll get him weighed out and get him in. Not a giant fish, but a good starting fish. At least we got something to start with. That first one's always the hardest one. Always weigh these things down in the boat. He's almost two pounds. Red. Looks bigger now when he came flying out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be culling him later, hopefully. Got, got my adrenaline going. But at the start, it's a start. He doesn't got one? feel very big. Huh? He doesn't feel very big. I think he's a rat. And until they come out here and realize. Yeah, might keep. <laughs> there you go, Matty. Good job. It's early in the morning yet. We got plenty of time. Oh yeah. Whoa. He might be 30. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, he was pulling. Let's measure him. He's 13. Huh? He's 13. Yeah, he's 13. Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Look at that look on your face. I'm just goofing. You know. We decided today we're probably going to try to start this tournament out. We know we can't see the fish right off the bat. And uh, so Matt had a few little areas. We figured we'd give it a shot here before before the, the sun level actually comes up. But it's, you know, I mean, got a couple fish in the boat. And it really helps you slow down when you're, when you're bed fishing, too, knowing that you got a limit, you know. So that helps. Or at least have enough fish in the boat to where you can take a little time with some of these bigger fish and stuff when you do find them. It's... Uh, and you never know. Doing this, you might be able to get that one big bite you need. Sight fishing is one of my biggest weaknesses. It, you know, yeah. I, I don't like doing it. I'm not good at it. I just don't have really good eyes. And uh, so that's why I'm kind of excited about today. Hopefully, I can watch it catch a fish. A little oh, better he, fish. He's a keeper. A little better. Yeah. A little guy, but he's a keeper. Well, don't, they're strong, huh? They got shoulders. Well, another little guy, but we'll take him. Right now, that's uh, that's uh, fish number three for us. I'm sure he's 13. <laughs> Look oh, yeah. at that going, man. <laughs> A buck 43, yellow. About the same size as your last one. 
There's some fish. Here's, here's the reason why I like the call that you just made to come here. Uh, a lot of boats aren't going to stop on this kind of stuff because they want to go fish the flats. So these fish aren't nearly as hammered. That's so true. if there are fish along here, you know, we got an opportunity to hit some of these fish that aren't getting hammered. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, a lot of people are sight fishing this time of year, and, and yeah. that's always been always been my weakness. My, my eyes aren't good, and, and seeing fish and, and knowing when they're going to bite or not, and it's, sometimes you spend a lot of time on a fish. I just, I don't really like that style of fishing, but obviously certain times of year in the tournaments to be competitive, you have to do it. Yeah. Um, that's kind of why I'm excited about today. I'm hoping to hoping you put on a clinic for me so uh, I can learn. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully. But uh, the wind don't blow 100 mile an hour and we can get it done. The pressure was on. I'll tell you, fishing with Matt, he's a great fisherman. And uh, I knew I had to produce, you know, uh, you know, because I knew he was looking forward to me doing that. And I'm like, man, I'll tell you, we came across this, uh, this nest that had the, both the female and the male on it. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, talk about pressure uh, to catch those fish. The pressure was on, let me tell you, because Matt does not like to sit in the back of the boat and just kind of toss fan cast around unless there's a real reason for it. And sometimes it takes a while to catch these fish. So the pressure was definitely on us, but uh, I'll tell you what, he did really good keeping me calm and, uh, and uh, helping me catch those fish. There's the male. Female, female will move up now. Yeah. Just sit here and be patient a minute. Keep casting, brother. We just gotta sit here and be patient a minute. She'll move up. If she doesn't move up, we'll move. And I won't waste a lot of time on her. But it's a big fish. Got her! Get the net! Big fish! Where's he at? Oh. <laughs> That's a nice one there. Yeah. That's what we needed right there. Now we're culling. All right. <sighs> Super bass, man. <laughs> oh, That's good cool. grief, man. I thought it was going to take me forever to catch her. Whew. All right, that was a 370. That helped us a little bit. We're starting to move out of the... Now we can start getting rid of the small fish. Let's start working on the big ones, brother. So throughout the day, I know the one of the first stops, uh, first, first spots we stopped was a real shallow area, uh, one of Johnny's favorite sight fishing areas at Saguaro. So we went back in there and it's, it's pretty much just a, a flat pocket. It's four foot all the way around it. And you know he found some fish right away. And he, you know, he has the power poles and those are pretty cool. They'll stabilize the boat and let you really concentrate on catching the fish without the boat moving around, having to run the trolling motor, that kind of thing. So he found a couple of fish that were, you know, were on beds and, and he's working on the fish. And I sat off the back of the boat and I made probably 20 casts off the back of the boat. We're sitting in four foot, I'm casting in four foot. <laughs> and finally I just realized, you know, I'm not gonna catch a fish off the back of the boat here in this spot. So a spot like that is even though I'm trying, I'm trying what I'm trying to do is try to trying to drag the bait. I was throwing a drop shot off the back of the boat, trying to drag that bait by a fish that's spawning and hopefully, you know, help Johnny out out of the back of the boat. Uh, but after a while I realized I had made every cast and every angle I could and there wasn't a fish to be caught. You can come up here and watch if you want, dude. It's pretty I cool. Wanna spook him. You ain't gonna spook them. See the nest? Oh yeah. Got the meal. All right, that's a good one. Where's he at? <sighs> now the female. That's a nice one there. Now the female, brother. That female's twice the size of that fish. Inside the mouth? Yep, inside the mouth. That's how you do it. You wait for him to take it away. Good job. <laughs> Come that on, Betty. That'll call. Huh? That'll call. Yeah. Two and a half pounder. Call. Call? Blue. Blue. All right. We're getting there. <clears throat> That's just the male. Blue. Wait till you see the female, dude. Totally uninterested now. Was that? We might have blown the opportunity. <clears throat> Probably should have thrown right back in on her right away, but we had five fish, you know? We have yeah. to cull them before we can fish again. 
At least that's what I thought the rule was. Oh. Yep. I have five fish in the boat. They don't get that big by being stupid. You know, this is crazy. Matt said after we got done in the first little cove that we were in, Matt, Matt tells me, he's like, hey, John, you know, uh, <clears throat> I saw a ton of fish between the two boat ramps there uh, where you launched the boats on Saguaro Lake there. And uh, he's like, uh, man, you know, we, we got to go check that out. I, I, if you could see those, you could probably do pretty good. And there's a lot of pieces. There's probably a 20 pound bag right there. And I'm like, well, let's go. We weren't getting anything big where we were at. We had a few good fish, but we, we wanted to try to find some of those bigger female fish and some of the bigger fish to, uh, to help our creel out. And uh, so that's where we went. And we spent quite a bit of time in there with me just trying to sight fish on a fish or two. And this is where Matt started shining because he's like, you know, he started throwing that, what, what he does best, throws that doggone drop shot. He started fan casting it out there where the females would probably be hanging out. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, he did really well and helped us out a bunch doing that. It's not moving. You got one? Yep. Good fish? Yep, I think so. Uh, I can't tell. Huh? Can't tell, it's a fish. Was that huh. a Cinco fish? No, the drop shot. Oh, easy does it. That could yeah, be I a giant. Think, I don't think he's that big. Well, you never know. Nah, I don't think that's going to help, but it's a fish. Oh, man, it's going to help. It help. It's going to help. Oh, dude, that's going to help. That's going to help. <laughs> what are you kidding me? <laughs> there he goes. Daddy boy got one. All right. Oh, that's a good one. That'll help. A couple pounds anyway, huh? Heck yeah. Let's get him going. I'm going to stay on this bed real quick and look at it while you're doing that, okay? Uh, yep. That was out a little deeper. What's really cool about the other spot we fished was it had a little bit more of a drop off. So Johnny was finding those fish in that five to almost all the way down to 15 foot. He could see them with the, the sight fishing. So he was concentrating on those bed fish that were, you know, a little bit deeper off the bank. But what's, what was nice about that bank was it had a break line, a drop off. So it went from five and all the way out where I was casting was about 25 foot, probably 22, 23 foot. So what I did is I cast out deeper and, and kind of angled my cast and worked my bait uphill. And what I'm looking for is fish that are moving up to spawn and fish that had already spawned and are moving out. It's kind of like a staging area where these fish you know, that have already spawned are gonna be swimming out and kind of staged in that comfort zone. That comfort zone seemed to be like that 15 to 25 foot of water. So there's fish moving out and there's fish moving in. And, and it seemed like that was kind of a transition area where those fish were, were kind of staging. So while he was catching those bed fish, I could uh, cast out in the deeper water and drag that bait up. And I actually caught some fish, which uh, made me feel real good. Cause I was kind of worried about that. <laughs> Try to put ourselves, got there another one? Yep. Watch that. Yeah, I know. Good one? I, that might help. Look at you go, boy. <laughs> you need a net? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Maddie. That's a good one. You were all worried. <laughs> I'm not going to catch no fish today. <laughs> Weigh him. Yeah. See if he'll go. Good Why job, brother. Apple? Good job. You're doing what it takes. I'll just leave the net over here, for, uh, <laughs> you know. Make it easy on myself. Sheesh. There he is. Nice one? I think so. Oh, yeah. Man, he was out there. Yeah, he's pulling good. Man, you better hold up. Hold, yeah. Don't let him yeah, he's good. get off. Oh, God. Yeah, he's nice. a color, dude. That'll call. Yeah, he's culling. You got to remember there's structure underneath you, bud. Yeah, we're good. We're good. That'll work. Big net. All That'll right. help. That'll help a ton. All right. Oh, I thought he was bigger than that. He's a three and a half, brother. I think. There he is. Another that one, one feels not bad. Huh? That one feels pretty good right there. Good one? Yeah. That's a good one right there. That's a good one. All right. Oh. Oh. You're just not catching it. You did? Came off. Matt, what are Nothing you doing? I could do. That was a good one. That was that was a toad. Uh, my good buddy Dan Zaring was driving the camera boat. And as it was coming up, it was probably 15 feet from the trolling motor where he was running the boat. And uh, he got a real good look at it. And he's telling me it was five, five and a half to six pound fish. So anyway, it happens. It's a heartbreaker. 
and that was the, those were the bites we're looking for. And, and when you have them on and you see it and it swims away, it's, it's, it's almost like money just swimming away. You know, $100, hundreds of dollars of bills just swimming away and, and you know, you can't get it back. It just happens, it's part of fishing. That's what makes it so much fun. And uh, you know, that's what, that's what we live for, the tournament fishing. You try to sneak up on these beds, you, you, you know, you gotta be real sneaky. Otherwise, these fish just will not bite. Another thing Dan uh, Zaring told me about was one of Johnny's techniques to get these bed fish to bite is he likes to, to really give that rod a shake um, to make that bait action really quiver down there in the bottom. And I watched Johnny do it. He gets a lot of strikes. And <laughs> one thing that Dan <laughs> mentioned was uh, when he does that, his cheeks shake and he thinks the energy transfers down from his arms to the fishing pole. And when he does that, his cheeks shake and the fish grabs it. So he thinks that might be one of Johnny's secret. I definitely have the cheeks to uh, pull it off also. So I'm gonna be trying that in the future. <laughs> oh, I got it. I got it too. It's a good Did one. I get my bait reeled in. Oh, oh. oh man. Nice. That's a good fish, dude. Ready? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son! <sighs> nice fish. Eat All it. right, do it, baby. Wow. <laughs> Don't hurt that fish. In the mouth. Yep. <laughs> Swallowed it. 505. Yeah! Three That'll pound upgrade. Come. Nice. Nice fish. That's what I'm talking about, son. Little <laughs> 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 drop shot bass. <laughs> All the fish aren't spawning at one time. That's, that's one thing that, that I've really learned. It's like you hear about fish on beds. Well, there's a per percentage of the fish in the lake that are on beds, not all of them. That's the thing. So there's still fish that are deep and moving up shallow to stage the spawn. There's fish that have already spawned to move, and that are starting to move out. So there's, there's several different patterns going on. And usually, usually you, can, you can catch them several different ways. So that, that's one thing I always thought about is, is for every one fish, that you see on a bed, there's 10 you don't. Hey folks, we've had a great day here at Saworo Lake for the ABA tournament. Matt, I had a great time. We ended up fifth place, man. Great job. That yeah, was a lot of fun out we there. We had opportunity, man. I think it was a little over 20 pounds or something that won the tournament. We had a two and a half pounder we just couldn't get rid of, and we lost that one that was around five. So if you add two and a half pounds to our oh, weight, you know, it's one of, those, one of those tournaments that you drive yeah. home going, man, I wish I had that fish. But you know, it was close. <laughs> I mean, we, we really had a good time, and you can see that you can do a couple of different things if somebody's sight fishing. You can still catch them, and, and Matt proved that today. And as a matter of fact, we ended up going to a little bit of that in the afternoon when we figured out the fish were so pressured in the areas we were fishing, we just backed off and we knew the fish were gonna be moving up into the shallows and you know, we just caught those fish that were getting ready to move up. We had a great time on the show. We'll see you next time right here. I'm Johnny Johnson.